Hi, I'm Tim Carroll, the owner of Carroll Custom Cadillac here in Northern Texas, where we strive to bring the best Cadillac service and help with your North Star engine. As you know, we specialize in all years makes and models of Cadillacs, including things such as that antique Cadillac coupe that's sitting over there. Today we're going to talk about the North Star engine and our brand new head stud state-of-the-art system. This system is going to do away with the old, out of style, dual diameter head stud that we designed for the North Star engine. We want to be perfectly clear about the uh, head stud that we're referring to is one that we designed here at TCC and we have moved from that one and through evolution and learning more about the North Star, we are going to go to a head stud that is more reliable and takes all the potential out of any kind of engine damage that could occur with the oversized threads that we have seen in repairs by other companies that have provided a similar dual diameter head stud. So we just want to take that potential out of the equation. So we will talk more about this head stud as we uh, begin to bring you more installation videos. After this video, we will actually bring you one installing the head stud and we'll explain it more in depth at that point. Today, we want to talk about the time cert and show you its installation method. So we just want to be very clear about the time cert. Why we're using it is because all the holes have to be repaired regardless of what happens. So each time a head is removed from a North Star, after a factory build, all the holes have been compromised for the torque heel head bolt system, and we want to make sure that you know that all threads have to be repaired. We also want you to know that it was a TTY bolt, and we'll explain that more as we explain the stud system in our next videos coming up. Today, we just want to talk about the time cert, or a norm cert, or a GM cert, and explain why we see people out there uh, blaming failure on the cert. It is not actually the cert that's doing the failing, it's the TTY bolt system that is being used in the cert. So, when we see a separation and a head gasket failure after this repair, it's not the CERT. The reason we see the CERT come back out with the head bolt is because of the extreme torquing of the head bolt and its TTY system that has got a grip on the inside of the CERT that breaks it loose and pulls it out with it. So we want to get past that make sure it's, you know it's not that. When we no longer torque inside of a CERT, but torque only on the top of the head stud, then we have eliminated that ability to pull that CERT back out with the bolt thus making this a re more reliable repair. So we want to uh, make sure we point that out that the, uh, the CERT's use, the CERT's use in this method is fail proof. So we, we want to move forward here quickly so we can get this video out there for you. Today, we're just going to show the installation method using the time CERT system, which is readily available out there. Now as we move forward and progress with our new headstead system, we're going to make these kits available to people who purchase the uh, head studs to use them and just take them with a deposit and we'll ship it out and when we get it back and it's, everything's intact, which we trust it will be, we'll uh, release your deposit uh, immediately and refund it to you, making it to where you do not have to purchase this kit because it can be spinny. So we want to get that out of the way, make it more affordable for all our clients worldwide. So in this particular uh, kit, it comes with this jig plate. See, it's uh, has been used quite extensively over the years. We're going to do a top hole on this one. So we're going to, uh, we're going to let's do, do a bottom hole since I've got the different size studs here. The bolt. So we got one short up here, two short up here, and one long one in the bottom. What we're going to do is we're just going to, these are all coming to kit, so we're just going to drive these bolts down until they're just a, just a hair above the surface so we can move the plate around. Very simple operation. I just want to clarify how important it is that every step that you do in this operation is done. Very clean. Very 
very precision like so make sure if you you need to take your time to do it this right here is the bushing and the alignment pin so this is the hole that we're working with i will kind of spin that in there get a little bit snug so i know it's secure the place it in one spot i've got these down far enough i just barely need to tighten them up get that to where it's just touching so my plate's not moving around and then give it a nice snug fit so the plate doesn't move throughout the operation. At this point, you can pull your pin back out. It's a little tight. This pair of pliers pull it out real easy. So everything's secure, looks centered, it is centered, bushing's in. Now over here, we have our tools. And over the years, the using this might get a little bit bent, so you just put it inside of something and straighten it back up. This drill bit should last for many, many years. If you're using ours, like to see, uh, be careful not to bend it like we've done ourselves, but uh, make sure you just kind of take care of the product so when you, we get it back, um, we could uh, freely refund your money and uh, so you don't have to buy this stuff. So we have the drill bit, which is a step drill bit, which is if you look here at the time cert, it's got a step at the top. That stops it and prevents it from going any farther in the block. This is gonna set everything, including our stud, at the exact height needed when the job's done. So everything has alignments for you, marks on the drill bit uh, so you know when to stop. This is set up to where it stops at the top of your, of your hole and then you can proceed from there. So you have that, you have a, a tap that comes with a kit. It too has stopping marks on it and then you have an insertion tool with a stopping mark that will be used in the final process of, the, of in putting the tool, or putting the turning. So let's move on here. We'll go ahead and get started with the drill first. Now this is a fresh hole. All holes have a little bit of debris in them. We first get started out, so. Go ahead and get started with that. You can see it's got a slight little bend to the drill bit. It's, pretty, it's impossible to always keep it straight, so it's no big deal. This is in there, it's secured, it's cutting straight. It does get a little too bent. Be sure to put it inside of some. I usually use this hole here and uh, just kind of bend it a little bit and get it back in shape. So I just keep that going, get that going down the side here. Okay, now here's the thing. Once it gets a little chips in there and it starts to build up, you're going to know it because you're going to see the uh, the bushing start to spin. That starts to happen. Go ahead and pull it out. Let's get those chips out of the way. Just like you see on a time serve video and they explain to get the chips out. You want to get this job done right, clean and not mess anything up. So watch for that. Clean it out with the time clock. I know you can't hear me when I got the air going, so get the bushing out, get it cleaned up, get the drill bit cleaned off, and then get the bushing back in, you got a fresh start. We use oil on everything that we do. The reason we do that is we just want this to be a long lasting lifespan for our tools. These tools are very expensive, so it's imperative that they last their life and pay for themselves over time. It's been said out there, don't, you know, people, some people don't use it. We would like to see everybody use oil on their tools, and especially ours if we're releasing them out to you. So we're gonna get that going again. I've seen that been turning yet. It's starting to turn now, but I'm actually at my mark. So I didn't have to blow the chips out a second time. Sometimes it might turn, sometimes it might have to. So just gently pull that out of there. Get it cleaned off. Nice fresh start. Get the bushing back in. At this point, we're going to go ahead and tap the hole. So we drilled it. It's at the right depth. Everything's cleaned up. The steps you want to take. Come over. Get your tap. And your tapping wrench. Whether it's a ratch or a, uh, a solid fixture. 
And at this point, you're gonna go over here, get a little oil on it, keep it sharp. This helps prevent any damage. Now we're just gonna go ahead and drive that down in our new pocket. You can see it's pretty easy with a ratchet wrench. If you'd like to know where we acquire these and you'd like to acquire one yourself, yeah, just feel free to give us a holler. drive that down to the second mark because this is the bottom and we're just about there and I can feel it kind of get tight just as it starts to approach that so we're going to stop at that point that's usually a buildup of chips and showing us that we're at that depth so we're going to stop and back this out of here and you feel a little tight that's because it's got chips on it that are getting friction in there just get it out Get it cleaned up. What we're going to do, we don't even need the bushing for this part. We're going to go ahead and uh, just dry this down one more time. And that's going to clean up that hole and just make it nice and smooth where it will take the surf real gently, easy, and it'll spin down in place. And that's where it stops. And when you feel it stop, you're there. If I would have had the bushing on there, which I recommend, and I should have showed you with that, you'd see that that line stops at the top of the bushing. Now at this point we're ready to actually put in the insert. So we're going to take this tool off here so we can use the insertion tool on the same wrench. Get that ready to go. Go ahead and remove the plate. No longer needs to be here. way we can clean it up real good, nothing's in the way. Get the cert in and move right on to the next hole. So just remove your plate here. Set it aside. At this point is when we're going to begin to use brake cleaner to uh, keep get the hole clean. So this we're going to be real generous with. We want to make sure you, you understand that until you feel comfortable that the whole point, get it out as much as you want. It's like a good three times. There's no residue behind. Looks great. It's a beautiful cut, clean, tapped out nice. So at that point, I feel confident enough to go ahead and move on to inserting the, the uh, product. I'm going to make sure my hands, my hands are dry of oil and stuff, so I don't want any oil on my certs. Now, all my certs are nice and dry and clean and free of debris and oil. And that's the way we want it. We don't want any type of oil on the outside of these threads. All we want between these threads and the block is red thread locker to make a nice solid contact. However, on the insertion tool we will use a little bit of release agent which will go on the inside of the threads. We'll put that around the bottom like that. Take it with your clean fingers and gently put that on there. Go ahead and put it on until it just kind of gently comes to a stop. About right there. And at that point, is ready to go ahead and uh, put some thread lacquer on it and get her in the block. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put thread locker on just the bottom area of the cert. 
And we're going to be generous with it. Put it over here. Put it all around the bottom. No one around the top. It'll work its way up as it's being driven into the block. So at that point, kind of smear it around there a little bit. We'll go ahead and drive it straight into the block. So this is our hole. We'll get it right in there real quick. It goes right directly in with ease. You can feel it just spin straight on in there, just the way it should. Now, right when it gets to where it's kind of tight, it's doing that because the insertion tool is touching the bottom last three threads of the cert. The last three threads of the cert have a thickness to them that will cause the insertion tool to shove it very hard out into the block, which is the locking mechanism to lock it into place. So after it gets tight, go ahead and start making it a little bit in there, screw it on down. You can see there's a mark on here. I'm pat right now I'm past the point, and then you can see it go in. As far as I need to go, I have passed the locking mechanism of the cert, and I can freely go ahead and pull it right back out of the block. The cert is now at its full depth and locked into place. You'll see on the tool, we have some red thread locker and the oil. We don't want that on there. We want to make sure as we move forward that each time we use our tool, there's nothing on there, thread locker's not drying up on there, and you're ready, and things are nice and clean. Take and just blow that off a little bit, make sure it's clean and dry, and set up and ready for our next serve as we move forward. Set that aside. So at this point, we actually have the cert perfectly installed in that bottom hole. That is the installation method with the time cert kit. And when done properly, you can feel secure that that is going to remain at that depth. Now, now that we've done that, I'll explain that after we have completed the block and put certs in all the holes, we will set this block aside. Inside of that cert is that release oil. We know that that will not work with the head stud system when it's time to install it. So we will have to clean that oil out. We'll use brake cleaner to do it. But at this point, we do not want to put brake cleaner in the hole because it will interfere with the thread locker that's on the cert. So we want to make sure that the thread locker has an opportunity to solidify and lock the cert into place before we use the brake cleaner to clean the release agent out of the cert. In saying that, I want to emphasize that when you do that, you use brake cleaner to clean the oil out of there. Do it quick. Get your brake cleaner in the hole, get your air in there, and get it out of there. Don't fill it up with brake cleaner and allow it to sit there and soak into your thread locker. That chemical reaction can destroy the contact of your thread locker and its, and its ability to prevent that from backing out of there. So let's keep things clean and neat and solid and you will have an engine that will last you for many, many years to come with an unmatched headset system and you'll be happy. Anyhow, I'm glad you were able to take the time to watch the video. I hope this helps you move forward in your repair. Stay tuned for part two of the installation of the head studs and we will explain our head studs more in depth on our next video. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for hanging out with us here at CCC where you're always welcome. Take care and have a wonderful day. Now get ahead of you.